Today I've got some big updates for you from Carnival and Royal Caribbean and we are going to continue to talk about the Sun Princess. I've seen a few themes stand out as the things that people are worried about the most as well as some comments that got me thinking and I feel like need a reply and we're also going to talk about the elephant in the room and if you've been following along on our Facebook group I think you will know what that is but uh, stick with me here we've got a lot to talk about so let's go ahead and get started. Hi there, this is Allison with Let's Go Travel Tips and today is Friday. It is March 22nd of 2024 and let's start off here talking about Carnival. As you maybe know or may not know, Carnival is introducing a whole new island. It's called Celebration Key and that is going to be coming online in July of 2025. And um, so they released some new information about it which is really exciting. They say they're going to have five different portals on that island to start with and then they are going to do a Another phase. But the information that they are releasing right now um, I thought was really interesting. They're going to be talking about the area of the island that is adults only and that is called Calypso Lagoon. And then they're also going to be talking about a, a part that is called Paradise plaza and to me it sounds like that is the area where you're going to first come to when you get off the ship. They're going to have a fun area there for you to be able to take pictures and then of course music going and from there you can decide if you want to enjoy the beach, you want to um, do some water sports, you want to use a cabana, just a lot of things offered right there in the area that they're calling Paradise Plaza. Like I said that sounds to me like the area that you're going to enter mainly the ship from if I understand correctly. But then they're also talking about everything that's going to be available at Calypso Lagoon. Like I said, Calypso Lagoon is an adults only area of the island, which I think is a great idea. Um, they're also going to have a family area, which I think is an equally great idea. I think it's really um, wonderful when they divide up areas so that people can have the experience that they want to have. And the lovely thing is, is that you can move between those areas throughout the course of your day if you want to. So in that adults only area, they're going to have a swim up bar, they're going to have a DJ, they're going to have the same things where you can relax in the lagoon area, you can enjoy the beach. They're having a beautiful mile long beach on that island. They've also got um, the cabanas, the water sport options, all of these things that you can do. One other thing I think is really important that they are going to do is, sounds kind of fun, available they're going to have Bohemian food trucks, which is something I don't think we have seen before, so that'll be fun, as well as um, all of the things we expect, like bars so that everyone can get a drink, and um, a, a food, of course, otherwise, in addition to those food trucks. But it sounds like they are making really grand plans for this celebration key and slowly release information as we go. So like I said, now we know that we've got Paradise Plaza for everyone there. And like I said, that sounds like it's the main area where you are going to enter into that private island. And then also the Clipso Lagoon area. So let me know if you are thinking of booking a cruise just so that you can try out Celebration Key. I am. <laughs> Gordon and I think it would be really fun to go see. We thoroughly enjoyed the day that we had on, I call it perfect today at Coco Cay. It's really just Coco Key there, but um, they call it perfect day and we had a wonderful day. We thoroughly enjoyed ourselves and we were the only, it was just us two traveling together. So we had a wonderful time, but let me tell you, um, Already through spring of 2026, uh, Carnival offers 500 different itineraries that include Celebration Key. They've got 18 different ships that are going to call in Celebration Key and they are going to be sailing from 10 U.S. home ports. So they are clearly, once they've got that island up and going, they are going to take lots of cruisers there. And like I said, I'm excited to go see it and experience it and I'll tell you all what it's about. So we'll let you know when we've got that scheduled. Now, the next thing I think is worth mentioning is Royal Caribbean. Royal Caribbean, I would say, um, based on what I know, is the cruise line that had the most port stops in Haiti. And based on the violence that they're having on the island there of Haiti and have been having for a few weeks now, they are still having to cancel cruises that call there. Traditionally, they call it the port at Labadee there in Haiti. And they have just announced, usually at least with a three-day um, 
with nothing less than a three-day window to let cruise passengers know that they won't be calling in Haiti, but they are canceling that call in Haiti on cruises clear out through April 6th. So I thought it would be kind of nice to let you know some of the places that they are calling instead. So the Independence of the Seas on their March 21st sailing, so that is already underway. They are stopping at Grand Turk rather than going to Labadee in Haiti. Um, the April 6th sailing of Symphony of the Seas is going to go to Falmouth, Jamaica instead. And the April 7th de uh, departure of Oasis of the Seas is going to call in St. Martin instead. So I really do think Royal Caribbean is probably just scrambling and trying to see which ports have availability for their ships to go there instead. And I was have been kind of following the news along about Haiti there, and it seems like it might be a while before we can get back to business as usual and cruise ships going there. It doesn't seem like the problems are being resolved yet. So if you notice anything that I have missed, don't hesitate to let us know in the comments. Now this is really big news. Now we're gonna shift over to the Sun Princess. We're going to talk about um, first of all, something with the app. <laughs> so one of our Let's Go family members was reporting that with the new update of the app, they could see their separate back-to-back-to-back -back -back cruises separately. I can't do that, and I'm hearing from a whole lot of people that they can't either. So if you have a trick to that, would you please put it in the comments or send me an email, any of you that have been able to do that, let us know. Like I said, my back-to-backs um, are until next year in 2025 in the fall, but I still can only see the first one. I can tell that they're all lumped together because the date begins with the first one and ends with the last one, but I can't see anything on any cruise after. Um, I can only do anything with the first cruise. So we'd appreciate that. Another exciting thing, a Let's Go family member put in the comments um, that they were able to book Spellbound today. Now, I haven't been able to book Spellbound, and any if, you, if any of you have been able to book Spellbound as well, let me know, okay? And let us know how you did it, because we'd all love to know. Um, lots of people are um, letting me know that they can't do it, and they've got a Sun Princess cruise scheduled, so let us know. Now, um, here is the comment that caught my eye, and I have been thinking an awful lot about my experience, Gordon and I's experience when we were on the Sun Princess, what I expected from the Sun Princess when I got on board that ship, as well as what I shared with you. And so here's, I really want to try to encompass my thoughts on this, because to me it's a really big deal, and I think it really does matter. Now as I talk to you about this, we then we're going to slide in, and during the course of this conversation, three things really stand out to me that everyone is wondering about the Sun Princess. We are all, um, I would say, um, those of us who have cruised on Princess before, or if you have followed along a lot about Princess, you've cruised on other cruise lines, and you think you have an idea of what Princess is, we have um, an idea of what to expect on a Princess cruise. That, to me, has not changed, okay? But there's three things that really stand out that people worry a lot about, and we're going to talk about that during the course of um, my discussion here. So here's the thing that stood out to me, the comment. It says, thanks for your video. I had the impression that you found absolutely nothing wrong with the Sun Princess. I know it must be a great ship and a game changer for Princess, but some who sailed on her a week or two ago were unhappy that the ship was not ready for paying passengers. Do you think that because Princess invited the vloggers that they wanted to make everything perfect for them by fixing shortcomings, like my pasta, so they would say good things? I was not quite sure about the message of today's video about the Sun and the Princess experience. So they left that comment under my video that was the next day in Rome. And when I was in Rome, I did two quick video clips. One was about disembarkation, and another one was what I wanted you to think about when you're considering if you're going to book the Sun Princess. So I would say that if you think I didn't think anything was wrong with the Sun Princess, definitely go back and watch my other videos that I did while I was on board. Do I think the Sun Princess is perfect? Not in a million years. Do I think that you can sail on the Sun Princess? and enjoy a cruise and be happy that you went. Absolutely I do. And um, so in the course of that, so definitely go back and watch my other videos. Now the other thing that really stuck out to me about this comment is indeed yes. I don't really know. Um, a lot of people did sail on the Sun Princess starting on February 28th, and everything was not ready for paying passengers. And even when Gordon and I were on board, things were not ready for paying passengers. The dome was closed most of the time to either auditions or to, con I think, construction was going on in there. I'm not sure, but you could not go inside. And... Um, 
we didn't have shows the whole time, no production shows, um, either in the dome or in the theater. And there were a couple of singers that came during the course of our cruise and performed in the arena theater there. But overall, the entertainment was not ready either. And so I will say that they did an excellent job with everything that they did in the piazza there. They did a really good job with that. But yep, overall, the entertainment was not ready either. Now, how do I equate that being ready for paying passengers? I don't. And um, tell me what you think about that in the comments. I don't have a way to fix that. And I don't really know the way around it. Um, you know, of course, we all would really like if everything was working when we um, went on a cruise ship. Absolutely. Would we expect that? Yeah. And a lot of this I'm going to talk about in my video about what you need to think about if you're going to book the inaugural on the Star Princess. So watch for that. But um, yes, indeed. And so even though we were on board, everything was not quite working correctly even when we were there. Now, when it comes to the food, um, I'm going to talk about food a little bit later in this video as well. But do I think that they listened to my video when I was on the ship? Of course they did. That's where they heard that I was not pleased with the food in the main dining room and they offered to make things better. Do I think it's a good sign that they listened and cared enough to do something about it? Absolutely. Because that makes all of the difference if things will get better or not. Do I think that every dish that comes out of that kitchen will always be perfect? No. Do I think it would be perfect even if I had never been on that ship? No. It is really hard to make dinner for that many people um, day in and day out and have everything absolutely perfect. But I think that the key is, is that they're trying. And when they try to make things better and try to show something better, I think that's because they're trying really hard and that goes a really, really long ways. And so we're going to talk about food a little bit more, but I really do think, and I think it would have been more appropriate if at dinner time, that very first evening on the Sun Princess, if I would have made him take my fettuccine back, it would have been better for me to say, this is not like your usual fettuccine Alfredo. Please take it back and bring me um, <laughs> bring me new fettuccine. And so that's probably what I really should have done. But it's also... Um, yeah, it's just the way that it worked out, but I thought it was a really good sign that they cared enough. They could have just ignored that video and kept going, and I think that's what they would have done if they didn't care. So I am really pleased that they care. So having said that, here are some things that really stood out to me about the Sun Princess that I want to make sure that you were all thinking about if you thought that I think everything is perfect. Um, for example, some of the things that I would that to me are not perfect is where some things are located. Um, we've got the International Cafe. We are all used to it being down on that ground level floor of the piazza, and now it is up on deck nine. It is so close to the buffet. You literally walk around the corner and you're in the buffet that truly, if people wanted food at that point, they could just go in the buffet and get it. So to me, that placement doesn't make any sense. I think it would be better back down where we're used to. But does where it is, is that like a deal breaker? No, <laughs> no. If you want to, you can go get your food up there on deck nine and bring it down and eat it on deck seven there on the main level of the piazza. That's not a uh, game changer. The ship is absolutely beautiful. When you pull up to her, she's beautiful. Do I care for all the decor inside? No, it's not my vibe. Um, it's very gray. It's very... Um, and uh, nondescript and but you know what if you've been in on any other new ships lately um in my mind it reminds me of what i've seen on the celebrity beyond it reminds me of what we saw on norwegian encore it is very much what the current um like the modern look is not only in shipbuilding but like in home building um our two children that have bought new homes have that same color palette and um kind of way of doing things so that's just a personal preference thing. Is it a deal breaker? No, <laughs> it doesn't matter that much. Um, I will say that um, some things that stood out to me for having more and more passengers on board, there are sm the pools are smaller there in the middle of the ship up on the top on the Lido deck. They do have five pools on the ship though, so I think that is good. It spreads people out and our sailing was very full, but I did not feel crowded. It did not feel packed anywhere. There were a lot of people that would watch things at the piazza in the evening, but it wasn't so many that it seemed like it was way too many people. The thing I would say that stands out to me in a good way the most about the Sun Princess is it is Princess's take on the new larger cruise ships. And I think that that is an important step forward. But really to me, the cool things are the Spellbound. I'm really excited to see Love by Brito when that comes out. Um, 
all of the different dining venues I think is a really wonderful addition to cruise ships. The way they've done the main dining rooms, I've explained that to you in my other videos, don't need to do that again. I feel like that's a step forward and I really feel like they've got something to accommodate everyone no matter what cruise experience that they're looking for on that ship. If you want to dine more, um, have a dining experience every evening, you can do that. If you want to dine in the main dining room, I think they will do a lovely job of taking good care of you there as well. So it's my way of saying I don't think everything is perfect, but I think it's a lovely opportunity to try something new, okay? However, like I said in my video that I made in Rome, if you know what ship you like to sail on, if you know what class of ship you enjoy the very most, then stick with it. Just enjoy it. Go on your cruise and have the best time, okay? Now, um, the things that I think that people really worry about the most are how where things are located on the ship, um, for everything from where that international cafe is, to how the buffet is different, to how um, the stateroom configuration is a little bit different. Do I think any of those things are deal breakers? I don't. Another thing I think everybody is really worried about is everything going to be ready by the time I sail. I like to think, I don't know, I, no one knows, <laughs> quite frankly, I think, um, but I really like to think that hopefully as we get into April, we will see more things um, be ready to go. Um, the Love by Brito, I don't know how close that is. That is, um, I think a lot of workers were working in there when we um, went to try to see it. Um, but I think it's going to be a while till everything's ready, but hopefully that dome is going to be ready to go sooner than later. And um, even while we were there, we um, went in <laughs> to the theater while they were working on a production show. So things should be coming really soon. And then the other thing that I think people really worry about is, are you going to even like the entertainment? We've got that new kind of Cirque du Soleil-esque type of entertainment. It sounds like it's going to be there in the dome. We've got that arena that is a theater in the round or um, they can kind of, you know, it is, it's, a, it's circular there with the center part and then some behind it. Um, you know what? I think it'll be okay. I'm really excited to go back when everything is working so that I can tell you about it. But I think it's okay, and I think it's worth it if you um, want to go the first time and try it and see. But I wouldn't book a cruise um, for a little while. I'd give them some time to get some things worked out um, because clearly uh, we don't have definitive dates on everything. So just putting that out there. Okay, let me know what your questions are in the comments, okay? Now, the other thing that I think is really, oh, before we talk about that elephant in the room, which I kind of gave away is going to be something to do with food, um, will you please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already? Would love to have you with us, and I believe we need to have you with us. And if you appreciate my updates, would you please give this video a thumbs up? Believe it or not, both of those things are a big deal when it comes to YouTube offering our video um, to try to get more people people to see our videos. So I really appreciate your support. Now, um, if you um, have been following along, I talked about my experience with food on the Sun Princess. Like I said, the best part about it to me is that they cared enough to try to make things right. Like I said, they could have just ignored I said that and no one would have ever said anything. It would have just been out there in my video, but they chose to try to do something about it and make things better. If you haven't joined our Facebook group yet and you do Facebook, you should come and join us because we're having quite the discussion over there and a lot of updates. We've got some Let's Go family members who are on the Discovery Princess. And you might remember, oh, a couple of weeks ago, I shared with you a review by a Let's Go family member who was on the Enchanted Princess and said that their dinners at Rudy's were their best dining at sea and they have cruised enough to know. And so I was really encouraged by that, so excited about it, that Gordon and I booked um, a dinner at Rudy's um, when we are on the Discovery Princess here. I think our ship sails in 11 days now. And uh, really so excited about that. But we've got Let's Go family members who are on the Discovery Princess right now, and food is not what you would be expecting. And so this whole thing makes me um, think an awful lot about food and cruising and where we are right now. So we really need to talk about this in the comments. And I want to hear what you think. So here's um, everything people have shared thus far. And I think it's really important to remember food is subjective, but um, I have the pleasure of having spoken with both of these people that are sharing these. They are both well-seasoned cruisers. And um, so to me, it lends some credibility to what they say. But the bottom line is, is um, Let's Go family members went and had dinner at Rudy's, ended up not having the experience that they had anticipated with the food. Here's the part that stands out to me the most though. They went ahead and talked to the manager of that restaurant and instead of saying, 
you know, I am sorry you didn't enjoy your dinner. What was it that you didn't like? Instead of saying that, I said, you know what, you're the first people that have ever had a complaint about this restaurant. And that was it. <laughs> so that that doesn't indicate like my experience on the Sun Princess when they were so excited to make things right. They're not. And then uh, Let's Go Family Members they, at the Crown Grill wasn't the experience they were hoping for. And then they posted this picture of what they are calling a toasted cheese sandwich or a grilled cheese sandwich um, from the gastro... Um, Salty Dog Gastro Pub on board, and um, they had asked if they could have a new one with um, cheese on it, and they they said, nope, that's how that's made. We're ma not making new ones. So here is my whole discussion about this, and I want to know what you think about it. I honestly am starting to think maybe we should temper our expectations a little bit. We get so excited to go on a cruise, and we think, you know what, the main dining room has great food, but I want to dine in a lovely restaurant. I want to have even nicer dinner, and I'm willing to pay for it. And I am starting to wonder a little bit if when we do that, we should be a little bit more flexible. Tell me, should we be a little bit more flexible? Should we think, well, my dinner might be great, but it might not. And if it's not, oh well. Or what should we think? I don't know. I'm trying to figure out what the answer is. So I'm not telling you what the answer is. I'm asking you what the answer is. And I do know, I think it's very important to say that I would say so very often we go eat in the specialty restaurants and the food is excellent. And the same with the main dining room. But the times that stand out are the ones when they are not so good. And so I have been trying to figure out how we're going to manage this, how we should think about food when we're going on a cruise. And I know I probably overanalyze things, but I really want to know what you all think about this, because I think that as we move forward, we're going to continue to have experiences that are extraordinary, that are absolutely wonderful. And we are going to continue to have experiences where our expectations are not met. And so put in the comments what you think we should do, some things we should think about, and we'll talk about this all again together sometime soon. Now tonight we are going to do our live. We're going to start at 6 p.m. Eastern time. We're going to try to keep it to an hour. So bring your questions about the Sun Princess, bring your questions about cruising in general, and we'll have a really fun time together. I look forward to seeing you there, and I look forward to seeing you all here again tomorrow. I'll be talking to you all again really soon. You all take really good care. God bless you. Love you. Bye-bye.